Three, three, two, two, two one. one. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh my god. Counting Which doesn't work so I- when the sharpness oh, is up, the beginning of it nice. rather than the end of it. <laughs> You're an opportunist. You're supposed to be recording. <laughs> simple Simon. You s- rural simple Five. Simon. Five. <laughs> Four. Three, Three two, two, one. one. <laughs> right, boot him off the call. Get him out. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Despot's Bookshelf. Vladimir Ilich Yulanov, better known as Lenin, was born in 1870 in Russia and went on to be one of the foremost thinkers in terms of developing Marxism into the communist philosophy we all know and some of us love today. He was the first leader of the Soviet Union as chairman of the Council of People's Commissars of the Soviet Union, and he really was a key foundational influence in the state. He published, before the Soviet Union, well, around the time of the Russian Revolution and the creation of the Soviet Union, his seminal work, The State and Revolution, the Marxist theory of the state and the tasks of the proletariat in the revolution, which was his attempt to get involved in the debates about once the Russian upper classes have been overthrown, what should come after that, how the state should collapse in terms of building a proletariat state, anarchy, all of those kinds of debates. With me, Arnie Craven, to discuss Lenin's The State and Revolution, I have Jack Bannon. Hello. Chris Whitwood. Hello there. And Jack Carrington. Good time of day. Jack Bannon, let me start with you. Was there anything you found interesting in Lenin's The State and Revolution? No. No, there was not. Thank you, Jack. Chris Whitwood... How about yourself? Do you have anything uh, anything important to focus on in terms of what Lenin said? He he used many words, um, none worth reading. Thank you, Chris. That was insightful. And Jack Carrington, Lenin, the State and Revolution. Could you find any humour in there? I found um, page one to be tedious. Thank you, Jack. An assessment I think we can all get behind. I'll wrap this up in a moment. However, Chris is uh, has raised his hand. Do you have some cutting insight about Lenin's views? Wait, do you think that what, was there something that we've missed? Pubic power and the right to levy taxes. Well, um, I would simply add that I I also found nothing worth discussing in this plodding and pedantic two hundred pages. <laughs> So, let's move on to the bit of the podcast we all really enjoy, our favourite quote. Let me, let me first go to, to Jack Barman. Uh, Jack, w- was there anything in this book quotable? Is there anything, any quote you particularly enjoyed? Uh, the only quote I enjoyed was the following. In the present pamphlet, we shall have to confine ourselves naturally to the most important lessons provided by experience, those bearing directly upon the tasks of the proletariat in the revolution with regard to state power, because that was the final sentence of the book. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. I understand, uh, I understand from that you enjoyed it because you didn't need to read any more once you'd read it. Uh, Chris Whitwood, did you, uh, do you have any other quotes? Ministers are fooling the credulous rustics with phrase-mongering and resolutions. Although I kind of feel that because it was the end of the book, I'd be tempted to agree with Bannon's. Thank you, Chris. And Jack Carrington, as a credulous rustic, do you have anything to add, quote-wise? 
I think for me, the most poignant quote was written by Vladimir Lenin in 1917. Thank you, Jack. Insight there. Now, as we have nothing further to discuss, shall we um, give this a basket case rating? I will begin with Chris Whitwood. How many baskets out of five? I, I don't know. It's it's not insane. It's just... Well, I mean, it is insane. It's just dull. Uh, I don't know. Arbitrary three baskets. Three baskets from, from Whitwood, placing it amazingly in his estimation more baskety than Idi Amin's speech to the 1975 UN General Assembly. A fast, fascinating scoring system we've got going here. Jack Carrington? Five snores out of five. Impenetrable. I'm putting my foot down. We can't use a basket system for this. It's unreadable. Jack Bannon, let me ask you about first for baskets and then for snores. Uh, I would give it 2.5 baskets as that is the most dull level. Um, as for snores, I would agree with the five out of five rating. And I... Um... Yes, I think the the dullest rating is is either a two or a three, isn't it? Middle ground. You know, whilst we've been flippant on this call, we've been flip on this episode, sorry, we've been flippant because it's bad. But it is also a bit... He does... He's, he's got a real hang-up about the Paris Commune and certain other things. So, I, yeah, I'd I probably give it a three baskets and a, a terrible, a damning five snores... By far the the most pedantic, plodding, dreary, tedious bit of despotic literature I've ever read. So, at the end of this short episode, I will open the floor to comrades to see if they've got anything else to add before we wrap up. Could I just interject that I opened the book to a random page so that I could say I'd read more than one page of it, and the first line is, The Commune. And there we are. In that case, thank you all, and we will speak to you again next week. Продолжает собой, и сердцу тревожно вроде.